Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial of the Card Warden. The Card Warden is an iPad app designed to allow players to import and play their favorite card games. The app consists of four distinct areas. The Card Importer, where individual card images can be captured into the app. The Deck Editor, where those card images can then be arranged into decks. The Randomizer, which is designed as a companion for physical card games that require a unique setup for each play. And finally, the Game Table, which has all the card mechanics necessary to play a game. First, let's start with the Card Importer. The Card Importer allows us to import cards from existing card images on the iPad or from the built-in camera, depending on the generation of iPad you're using. For this demonstration, I'm going to import the sample cards included with the app. Here we can see a portion of the card image and some instructions. I'm going to zoom out for a moment and show you that this image consists of a card back on the left and a card front on the right. You always capture card backs first, then any subsequent captures will use this image for the back. So let's get this back image captured. First I need to center and zoom so that the card fills up the frame. Once I'm ready, I can then click Capture Card to Box. And in this case, I'm going to click Capture Card to Box 4. We now have our first image captured, but we're not quite ready to play a game yet. Now we need to start capturing the front images. In this case, I'm simply going to move the current image until the next card fills the frame. And again, I'm going to press Capture Image to Box 4. And that's it. At this point, I would simply continue to capture the card images needed to play the game. Note that on the right-hand side, I can change what will be the back image for the next capture by pressing the yellow arrows. This allows you to have multiple backs for your cards. This is ideal for games that require multiple backs or have cards that are double-sided. Keep in mind that regardless of whether the image is a front or a back or whether the card has multiple copies in a game, you only need to capture any card image once. Don't capture a new back image for each card and don't capture a card five times because the game requires five copies. In a moment we'll use the deck editor to create multiple copies of this card. In fact, let's head over there now. Here we are at the deck editor. Here is where we will create the necessary decks to play our games. In this case you can see the images we just scanned are located on the bottom of the screen. I can simply tap the images below to add them to the deck. In this case, I'm going to add five copies of our Warden Fighter to this deck. Now the images are pretty small. If you need help seeing it, just hold your finger over the image and a zoomed in copy will appear. Now let's go ahead and give this deck a name. I'm going to call this deck Fighter. and I'm going to go ahead and save it. I can now see that my deck has been saved and is now available in both the randomizer and game table. One important note, when you create a deck the first card will be at the bottom of the deck and the last card will be at the top. This is very important for games such as Thunderstone that have multiple level hero cards in one deck. You should start by adding your level 1 cards, then level 2, and finally level 3. Then when you add your hero decks to the game table, they're in the proper order. Now let's take a look at some games that I've set up already and what their decks look like. Here are my Dominion cards. As I scroll through, you'll see copper, silver, gold, and the rest of my cards. And I also recommend creating a starter hand. Here I have a deck called Player Hand. Once I have my table set up, I simply add a player hand deck for each player and give it a quick shuffle. Then I'm all set to play. Let's take a look at Dominion on the game table. Now the first thing we need to do is add a deck. I'm going to select my player hand and add it to the table by using the yellow arrows to select it and then pressing add deck. Now to move the deck, I simply press and hold on the deck until it becomes semi-transparent and I can now drag the deck and release it. Next, let's give the deck a quick shuffle. All available options for cards and decks can be reached by tapping the card or deck. This will give us a zoomed in image as well as several options. In this case, I'm going to select Shuffle. Now I'm going to deal a few cards by simply dragging them off the deck. Now I can simply drag my cards wherever I want. 
I can move one card or I can overlap several cards to move them. I can even place them back onto the deck. Now let's take a look at some of the available deck options. Flip will flip over the entire deck. The top card is now on the bottom and the cards will change from face up to face down or vice versa. I can also select top to bottom. This will move a, the single topmost card to the bottom of the deck. We already did a shuffle. We also have destroy which will completely remove a deck or card from the session and finally rotate which will rotate the deck by 90 degrees. Now let's take a look at some of the card options. As you can see, we now have a zoomed in image of the card. From here we can use flip to flip the card from face up to face down. We can also add and remove token values and rotate and destroy functions work just as we stated before. Now we also have the make deck function available. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you can see that we have a deck of one card. The significance of this is that now any additional cards that are placed on this one will be added to that deck like so. This is perfect for creating discard piles. Another feature are the trays. There are six trays total. These can be used for additional off-screen storage. Simply touching the edge of a screen will activate and dismiss trays. Let's go ahead and add a few cards to this tray. And then we'll put them off to the side. Now when we need those cards we simply activate the tray and then they're all right there available for use. Now let's load up a game I've already set up and see how it would play. Here you can see all my cards are laid out and using the trays I have a player one hand already shuffled and ready to go and a player two hand already shuffled as well. I recommend that once you have a table set up for a new game use one of the save slots for this setup. This way you can quickly start a new game assuming you're using the same game setup and you're ready to go. Now let's go ahead and deal a few cards. I'm going to switch back to player one's hand and I'm going to deal myself five cards. But before I do that, I'm going to tell the card warden that I want the cards dealt face up. That's the yellow button at the top of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself one, two, three, four, five cards. So I have three coppers showing. So for my three copper, I'm going to buy myself a village card. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to take that village card and I'm going to make it into a deck. Again, it's a deck of one card, but that allows me to drag the rest of my cards into my discard pile. Now I can deal myself another five cards. I can also switch over to player two, and they can have a turn with their deck. But to keep up with the demonstration, I'm going to go back to my player one hand, and I'm going to continue playing this hand. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five cards. So now I have four coppers showing, and for my four coppers, I'm going to grab a smithy card, and again, I'm going to drag my cards into my discard pile. Now I'm going to flip my deck over, and I'm going to move it back to my starting position. You could, yours could be wherever you prefer. And I'm going to give my deck a quick shuffle. Now I am ready to continue playing. And that would be a quick example of how to play Dominion. I just wanted to quickly show you, uh, I loaded up a box of Thunderstone cards, and I'll show you that I can quickly get my default setup loaded quickly, and I'm ready to sit down and play a game of Thunderstone. So I went back and loaded up my Lord of the Rings cards, and I'm going to show you how quickly I can get into my introductory scenario, which is the passage through Mirkwood. As I said earlier, I have the multiple backs set up for my decks, uh, as well as with my quest cards, you can see that I have side 1B is currently showing. Now, if I flip that card and I zoom in, you'll notice that the other side is 1A. So this is actually a double-sided card um, being used in the game. 
Now let's load up a game that's already in progress and you'll notice a couple of other things going on here. For example, we have shadow cards. Um, we also have the quest. I'm using the white token for progress. And unfortunately, you'll see a red token on this one, which indicates damage. So uh, we have that. I would also use the white tokens here for resources. And keep in mind that on the game table, there are two score tallies on the bottom, which can be ideal for keeping track of threat as you're playing the game. So there you have it. Uh, that's a quick rundown of the Card Warden and what it can do. I hope some of you found this helpful. I look forward to any information, any feedback. I is greatly appreciated as I plan to update the app uh, regularly. Um, and thanks for watching.